So we're back in the dry. Um, as you can see, the podcast, a little behind the scenes almost. Look at that. Mm. Yeah, nice. Uh, Chris, you were very frustrated at the Fulham game today, weren't you? 16 games unbeaten Fulham, surely not too much of a of a bad thing to lose to them? No, no, it's not. Fulham are a good side. I'm, I'm not saying that, you know, um, old Connor has uh, wound me up slightly with his tweet after the game. Oh, so what, what did he say? Well, he said we were outclassed today. I think we were. In my opinion, I don't think we were. I think that's very over the top. I don't think we were outclassed. I tweeted that. You sure it wasn't my tweet you read? No, 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 Connor said outclassed. Okay. I think you said Great class think above. You said class above, which okay. is also wrong. <laughs> look, look at the stats. We weren't outclassed today. I felt like, especially in the first half, we were in the race. We could have done it. I thought that, that both of the goals were sloppy defending. One of them, you know, Timmy K there, he's got to clear it and mm -hmm. sold Angus. And Angus did well to, to, save, uh, to save the first one, of course, and then unfortunately a really unlucky rebound. And for me, that doesn't show you being outclassed today. But I think what today's game does show is that Daniel Farker needs to learn to adapt. I mean, what are we doing? Still playing two CDMs, still not playing two up top, still sticking with Josh, in my opinion, you know, maybe in, look, we can blame injuries today. Mm. We've got the luxury of affording to blame injuries. Well, one injury. Exactly right. So if we go to QPR and play like that, I'm going to be so, so frustrated. Well, Hernandez is going to be injured for, for QPR as well. I so. mean, I just think today, and people, you know, were, were grizzling and grubbing. The atmosphere was terrible. Mm. It was really, mm. really bad. It was almost like, it's amazing with Norwich because we've got the best fans in the world, in my opinion, in terms of the fact that we attend everything. We're always there. We'll travel across the country in our numbers. But... The, the fact that everyone turned up today and didn't make noise at all, didn't even <laughs> sing on the ball, City was weak. Uh, I'm just, mate, I'm just frustrated mm. because uh, I, I thought today we, we could have been more productive with the opportunities that we had. I, sp I suppose the, th the thing is, uh, touching on the atmosphere, we're, what, 14th place, I think the lowest we can go is 15th, the highest we can go is like 10th. Yeah. So it is almost tough to get up for these games now, isn't it? I agree, I agree. Um, but, you know, and, and actually, I think today the, the atmosphere was, was a result of the performance on the pitch. Yeah. Um, I have to say, on a positive note, I do need to say well done to Mario in the first half. First half, I thought he was brilliant, played some sublime passes, looked very in control, so credit where credit's due, well done Mario. I thought also Harrison Reed in the first half was excellent, was, you know, his, his aggression off the ball was excellent, and we only saw that aggression really at the back end of the second half, where we were just ended up, you know, kicking the shit out of each other just because both teams seemed frustrated. Um, but look, it's just really annoying because we're so we are so close i mean a, a, a frustration today for me was pinto mm. and i don't mean it negatively in a, in a weird sense i thought pinto <clears throat> going forwards was absolutely brilliant his defending i thought was also on point but the norwich fans were frustrated that pinto didn't cross the ball mm. pinto has been specifically told don't cross the ball because crossing isn't your ability just cut it short to madison no one was with him so pinto is trying to do in that correct, area. correct correct and to be fair to pinto he was doing everything that he could do but no one was supporting him he was bombing up the pitch and no one was there with him it just seemed to me today like the the, the tactics was was negative I, I thought that in fairness daniel farker got it wrong today what about dennis up front um his sort of nothing like second i don't i don't buy this oh he's got a great touch you know someone said it to us after the game look he's got a good touch but I, I personally think Nelson, look, Nelson, exactly. Nelson Oliveira came on and immediately did everything that he was doing and better. I personally think it's criminal to not be playing a fully fit Nelson Oliveira. Like, it's like Chelsea with Diego Costa, right? If you've got a player on your team with attitude, you work with him because he's a brilliant player. But you've just got to learn to deal with it. Now, Are you question Farkas man management? Yeah, I absolutely am. I, th I think, for, for, well, I've, I've always said it from day one. They were not, you know, too hardcore, but you know, I think the the management of not Nelson Lavero because he is a, he is a wildfire, but the, the experienced players particularly. Yeah. And again today, we we say this every single match, and I am so bored of saying it. Wes comes on, creates attacking opportunities, arguably the most we've looked in the whole of the second half. Bring him on earlier. Mm. The players that you've got on the pitch, were, they were finished, man. They were finished. Mm. They weren't going to do anything. Wes needed to come on earlier today. You'll be at QPR. I will, and I'm looking forward to it. And yeah. You know what the funny thing is? I'm being really negative and I'm very stressed now, but I'm really confident against QPR. Good. Reason being, we're away from home. There's not this emotional grey cloud that's over Carrow Road at the moment. So we'll go to QPR and knowing Norwich, we'll probably get three points. Brilliant. Cheers, mate.